as I walked in, there were, there were people from other countries, a lot of foreign people from other countries in civilian clothes with interpreters with them, with security badges hanging around their neck. And the first thing I thought to myself, if this is NASA, what are all these foreigners doing here? What are all these people from other countries speaking other language? Didn't make any sense to me. And I was really quite impressed with that. It just didn't grok. You know, I was, you know, what are, what are all of these people doing here? And they were very quiet, very reserved, and there was a very peculiar pal hanging over them. Um, they were very, they had a very concerned demeanor, okay? So they took me into this laboratory. I took a look at the equipment. There was an airman second class in there. I was an airman second class as well. He turned the equipment on and put it through its paces. It didn't do what it was supposed to do. I saw what was going on with it. I said, I, I need to do some troubleshooting on it. It had little printed circuit boards in it with discrete components at that time. It was before we had integrated circuits. And I said to him, you know, we'll have to take this thing out of the lab if we're going to work on it. We can't work in it, on it in here in the darkroom environment. So he called someone to get some people to come in and move it. It was about the size of a small apartment refrigerator. It, you know, it wasn't something you could easily move. So everyone left the facility, left the darkroom, except this airman second class and myself. And we're in waiting for someone to come to remove this piece of equipment. So while I'm in there, I said to him, and I'm really fascinated with this process, how did they get the images from the lunar orbiter to the laboratory here? And he went through the whole process describing how the various radio telescopes around the world were linked and they telemetered the data into Langley Field. And at the time, I didn't know what the real purpose of this darkroom and this operation and this facility was. I thought this was where they were bringing the data in and then releasing the images to the public. I had no idea that there were other issues involved in, in this facility. So he, he starts telling me all of this information and I knew that what we were doing was, was, was classified anyway and that he could only share a certain level of what he was doing with me because of the part, compartmentalized nature of, of our jobs. At any rate, I um, you know, he told me how everything worked. He showed me the equipment where the digital information came in, where it was converted to photographic images. They were doing 35 millimeter strips of film at that time, which were then assembled into 18 and a half by 11 inch uh, mosaics, they were called. There was a digital signature and a grayscale on every 35 millimeter strip. And those, those strips were from successive passes around the moon, and they would take and build up a photograph. They would scan one section of the moon, then another and another, and then they would get a larger image. So this mosaic then would be put in that contact printer and that was then a print that was issued to whomever, the press, the scientist, whatever, wherever that was intended to go. So he was showing me how all this worked and we walked over to one side of the lab and he said, by the way, we've discovered a base on the back side of the moon. And I said, I said, whose? <laughs> what do you mean, whose? He said, yes, there's, we've discovered a base on the back side of the moon. And at that point, I beca became frightened and I was a little terrified, thinking to myself that if anybody walks in the room now, I know we're, we're in jeopardy, we're in trouble, because he shouldn't be giving me this information. I was fascinated by it, but I also knew that he was overstepping a boundary that he shouldn't be stepping over. And then he pulled out one of these mosaics and showed, showed this base, which had geometric shapes. There were towers, there were uh, spherical uh, buildings. Uh, there were very tall uh, towers and things that looked somewhat like radar dishes, but they were large structures. So I, um, I didn't say any more to him because I was concerned again that somebody was going to come in at any moment would catch us having this conversation and we would be in, in, in real trouble. I realized that he was telling me this information because he didn't have anybody else to talk to. Now probably in that laboratory he was probably the, one of the few uh, enlisted people and he was a worker bee. And he had a high level security clearance obviously. 
but he couldn't share that information with anybody else. And in those days we didn't. When you had your security clearance, you took it seriously. It isn't like today where people don't take these things seriously. We had a different set of morals and ethics and values. That's the way we were raised and we, we stayed bound by those agreements. So it was rare that someone would, would do something like this, but this fellow and I were the same rank. I think he, he was very distressed. Uh, he, he had the same pallor and demeanor as the scientists outside the room. They were just as concerned as he was. And he needed to, he needed to discuss it with somebody. So that was the end of it right there. I didn't take it any further than that. I, you know, I, I just filed it away. But the interesting thing, every day that I went home, I would think to myself, I can't wait to hear about this on the news, you know. And, you know, so I'd turn on the TV and I'd look at the news to see if they're going to announce, we've discovered a base on the back side of the moon, being really naive, you know. And, of course, here it is 30-some years later and we still haven't heard about it.